Alrighty, in this video we're going to be looking at radio and radio buttons are but they're used everywhere. If you've ever filled out a form at all, you're almost guaranteed to have used a radio button. So the chakra ones are pretty interesting, useful, flexible, and you could customize them to your heart's desire. So we're going to next look at the docks and then after that we're going to see a couple examples of radio buttons. And yeah, let's just get to looking at the uh, information about what Chakra has to say about it. So as we look here, it says radios are used when one, when only one choice may be selected in a series of options. Now, don't accidentally be one of those, uh, I guess, individuals that tries to make a radio like a checkbox kind of deal. Um, I know there may be some need, desire, want, use case out there for that. But radios typically, when we see them, or radio buttons, I should say, are used to just, like it says here, select one of a series of options. If you're going to do anything else, use, use a checkbox or, or some other means, right? And so as we come down here, we're importing them as a radio and a radio group, meaning that, hey, we're going to have something that's going to bring them all together here. So keep your eye on the lookout for that as we scroll down. So we have a usage right here, first, second, third and we have this use state so it's already showing you a lot of things out of the gate here we have this radio group which is interesting it's showing it early on which is good and so it's setting the on change here so it's handling the input coming on in and it's setting the value and it's sending it off to the use state right here so when we do have an on change we're using set value and then this is actually capturing which of these values is being updated in the on change here so there's no event or event dot target dot i always have to look it up because i never memorize it coming on in here and what's cool too is that you could set the value so out of all these radios in here to whatever the value is here which is uh, in the state hook here one so when it loads first is going to be the first thing to load if we put in two or three second or third would have been loaded when the page loaded. So that is pretty interesting. And this is telling you off the bat that radio groups kind of cascade all the changes down below to the you know radio children it has here, but it also manages like state for everything, which is really nice. We could change colors too, and they're doing that here with the color scheme. So the first radio, I wish it was like radio button one or radio two, because they're both radio. It's kind of hard to say this radio, that radio, but the first option here we could see when we click it's red and then the second one right here when we click on it it is green they have their assigned values of one and two and this radio group here has the prop that says default value equals two so when it loads here it's actually starting with this but if you look at the previous example the value right here is one so that's two different ways that you could load in a value or default value. Typically I go for value in general because sometimes when you have a default value and then you interestingly bring in just another value uh, prop and you have both of them in there, the browser typically tells you, hey, choose one or the other. And so we also have radio sizes here. We have small, medium, and large. As you can see, they, you know, small, medium, and large right here. And I think these are pretty nicely appropriately sized right here. And one of them isn't, you know, because sometimes their smalls are kind of like, I feel, you know, for some of the components, like it's pretty tiny for a small, but hey, that's just kind of the way things are. And if you don't like it, you could always customize it. We could also disable things. The checked right here is disabled. We could do that by slapping in this prop of disabled right here, or is disabled. And using state or some other means, we could control this to toggle it on and off. Then we also have horizontal alignment down here. And so we have the radio group default value one. So this is checked. We have a stack, which is um, controlling everything right here and is having direction equals row. So it's moving all of these into a row, which I guess is pretty nice here, but that's not a specific radio-esque type of functionality. It's just showing that you could use a layout component to you know structure align these however you want we could also come in here and we could have a is invalid so if they select maybe if you're making a game or something like that 
you could, and they select the wrong choice, you could say, hey, this is invalid or whatever it is you want to do. But this is a good way to show to your end user that, hey, this is a bad value. We could also do custom radio buttons. Uh, I don't think I cover these in any of the examples because this is, you know, kind of out of the scope of things. Everything is a box deep down. So if you want to come in here and start, you know, whipping up your own custom components that are essentially at the base level going to be boxes, feel free to. And you could, it definitely allows and encourages you to do so. If the stuff they don't, you know, if the stuff they give you doesn't meet your use case out of the box. And so it says a note about name prop. And so as we recommend passing the name prop to the radio group component instead of passing it to each radio component, by default, the name prop of the radio group takes precedence. So I guess if we're going to give this a name, do it at the highest adult parent level rather than nesting it within here. Plus, the more repetitive code you have, the harder is this gets lobbed into, you know, a 100, 200 line, you know, file. It just more stuff you have to wade through visually. Then we have all the props coming down here. Be sure to check all these out. But, you know, I feel like coding. So let's do some coding. I'll see you all in a couple seconds. So what we're going to do for the first example is just some basic stuff. And I think actually the second example is way more basic. But for the first one, uh, just to switch it up, what I'm going to do is show you how to make a radio group, use the radio uh, components themselves, but also we're going to add some color schemes. So how do you make them look kind of pretty? But also, how do you use state? How do you make them controlled buttons um, a bit more specifically? So let's get to doing that. So we have this box right here giving up some padding, the radio group, and in here we have a stack just to organize this a little bit more. So let's go ahead and check out each of these radio buttons. So, you know, we could click on them. Yeah, okay, that's cool. But you notice that it's not just like, you know, one, one kind of um, option here. So let's actually give values to these and then see how do we actually make them work kind of like normal radio buttons. So now we've assigned some values to here. So we have one, two, or three. So you notice how once we added a value in here now, we can't just select them all. If we were able to select them all, we might as well have check boxes. But radio buttons are more about singular types of choices. At least that's how digitally, culturally, they've been designed and shown to people. So we have this going on for us right here. So let's add a color scheme just to this last one here because in this tutorial, we've seen color schemes a lot, and there's a lot of ways to style these. But it's always helpful to, you know, go over those again. And so we see here that we have, the, it's blue, it's blue, but when we select this one, it's red. Now, can we go ahead and disable this? We can, and actually in the next section, I'm going to show you how to disable a radio button. But we could also give extra meaning by color saying, hey, I don't think you want to select red on here. Or maybe you're choosing toppings for a pizza, right? And this is your third topping. But they're warning you, hey, this is like a lot of meat. Are you just trying to order, you know, five pounds of beef with some like cheese and bread with it, right? Just thinking of wacky examples out there. But this is just a visual, another way you could add um, context to your radio buttons. But... Radio buttons, this stuff doesn't really matter unless we're capturing data. So how do we go about doing something like that? Let me go and set up some state, and I'll show you how. So 
So as we can see here now, we have on change and we have value. If I wanted to switch this to say three, now when it loads, it is this third value right here and we could still go on to change whatever it is we want to right here. But now as we're clicking through, we should be setting the value here. So let's go ahead and prove that we're doing that. And as you can see here, as we move through, and this looks a little, sometimes the things about Shocker that's a little interesting that I've found is that there's a set value, but typically you're going to be passing in the, you know, E or E.target.value. But one thing about the series is that I actually coded all these way in advance. So this is actually very early on. So I remember I coded this and I'm like, huh, this is interesting. It works. This may not be the most appropriate way to do it or one of many ways because it's programming to do an on change with a radio group. But you could see that this value is changing when I click one of the radio buttons up here. So this seems to be working. Everything looks good. It's just that, you know, this library, I guess, has an interesting way of doing things sometimes. So in the next example, what we're going to do is look at how to change the size make something disabled or something just straight up invalid. So I'll catch you in a couple seconds. All right, so welcome back. What we're gonna do now is pretty much keep everything the same. I've changed the radio button here to just third. There's no any extra color scheme or fun text, but we're gonna keep the values the same. And the first thing we're going to do is just change the sizes so we could see what our options are. So we can see from left to right here, it gets bigger. That's a pretty noticeable here. But what if I wanted to come in and, because I'm going to work on these two examples because they're just larger and I think easier to see. What if I wanted to make one invalid? How do I do that? I come in here and I give it this red right here. Now in the previous example, I used a color scheme to do that. And that's, that's still totally acceptable to do. A lot of these things are kind of up to, I guess, what you want, what your team wants, what the design team wants. But this is how you make something explicitly invalid, even though you could still select it from the outset. Maybe you also come in and update the color scheme too, so everything is red. And then if they click enter or some kind of continue on button, it doesn't allow them to do so. But what if you wanted just to like nuke the option altogether that they could click something? we would say is disabled. And since both anything that is, you know, is looks like a question is defaulting to true. Since this is disabled, now you, you can't click it. It's disabled. And these are just some of the neat things you could do with radio, radio groups. Um, if you like what I'm doing, like, share, subscribe. I love doing it. And I'll see y'all in the next video.